Rejoice and be glad, the Redeemer has come. Go look on his cradle, his cross and his tomb. Rejoice, tell the story of him who was slain. Rejoice, tell with gladness, he liveth again. Rejoice and be glad, it is sunshine at last. The clouds have departed, the shadows are past. Rejoice, tell the story of him who was slain. Rejoice, tell with gladness, he liveth again. Rejoice and be glad for the Lamb that was slain. O'er death is triumphant and liveth again. Rejoice, tell the story of him who was slain. Rejoice, tell with gladness he liveth again. Rejoice and be glad, for he cometh again. He cometh to glory, the Lamb that was slain. Rejoice, tell the story of him who was slain. Rejoice, tell with gladness, he liveth again. Good morning. Welcome to the Church of St. John the Evangelist in Inverness for our family Eucharist on this third Sunday in Advent, a Sunday which is generally given the title Gaudete Sunday or Rejoice Sunday because in the traditions of the propers of the Mass for this day, the opening words are Gaudete in Domino Semper. Rejoice in the Lord always. And as a sign of the, it being a Sunday of rejoicing, the penitential mood of Advent as we prepare for Christmas is lifted slightly. And the candle in the Advent ring is pink rather than purple. And so we have this rejoicing Sunday of prayer and praise. So we welcome those of you joining online and pray that you may know Christ's presence with you where you are as we come in prayer and adoration. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Amen. Amen. Lord, Lord, have mercy. God is love and we are God's children. There is no room for fear in love. We love because God loved us first. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith. God our Father, we confess to you and to our fellow members in the body of Christ that we have sinned in thought, word and deed, and in what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry. Forgive us our sins and deliver us from the power of evil. For the sake of your Son who died for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. God, who is both power and love, forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his Spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. 
to light the third candle on our Advent ring, having lit the first two to remind us first of how God spoke his word to the patriarchs of old, and then his word coming to the people of Israel through the words and works of the prophets of the Old Testament, and now how God spoke through John the Baptist and his message of the coming Messiah, of the coming kingdom, and calling people to prepare for the coming of the Lord and to repent. God our Father, you gave to Zechariah and Elizabeth in their old age a son called John. He grew up strong in spirit, prepared the people for the coming of the Lord, and baptised them in the Jordan to wash away their sins. Help us, who have been baptised into Christ, to be ready to welcome him into our hearts and to grow strong in faith by the power of the Spirit. We ask this through Jesus Christ, the light who is coming into the world. Lord Jesus, light of the world, John told the people to prepare, for you were very near. As Christmas grows closer day by day, Help us to be ready to welcome you now. Longing for light, we wait in darkness. Longing for truth, we turn to you. Make us your own, your holy people, light for the world to see. Christ, be our light, shine in our hearts, shine through the darkness. Christ, be our light, shine in your church, gather sent your messenger to prepare your way before you. Grant that the ministers and stewards of your mysteries may likewise so prepare and make ready your way by turning the hearts of the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, that at your second coming to judge the world we may be found an acceptable people in your sight. For you are alive and reign with the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and to put on the armour of light, now in the time of this mortal life, in which your Son, Jesus Christ, came to us in great humility, that on the last day when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal through him who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 
A reading in the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins, they shall raise up the former devastations, they shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. The word of the Lord. A reading in the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise the words of prophets, but test everything. Hold fast to what is good, abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely and may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful. The word of the Lord. On Jordan's bank the Baptist cry announces that the Lord is nigh. Come then and hearken, for he brings glad tidings from the King of Kings. Then cleanse me every breast from sin, make straight the way for God within. Prepare we in our hearts a hope, where such a mighty guest may come. For thou art our salvation, Lord, our refuge and our great reward. Without thy grace our souls must fade, and wither like a flower declared. Stretch forth thine hand to heal our sore, and make us rise and fall no more. Once more upon thy people shine, and fill the world with love divine. All praise, eternal Son, to thee, whose advent set thy people free, whom with the Father we adore, and with the Spirit evermore. Reading in the Holy Gospel according to St. John, in the first chapter beginning at the sixth verse. Glory to Christ our Our Saviour. 
there was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, Why then are you baptising, if you are neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptise with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany across the Jordan, where John was baptising. Give thanks to the Lord for his glorious gospel. Praise to Christ our Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Darnaway Castle in Murrayshire is home to the Earls of Murray. And in the great hall of the castle, you can see a wonderful example of an oak hammer beam roof. The great hall was built almost 600 years ago, and the wood was from the oak trees that lined the River Finthorn trees that even then must have been hundreds of years old. And if you go along the river today, you can see these oaks and from the stumps that had been left in 1450, new trunks have grown that are now almost 600 years old. So the stumps themselves may be more like a thousand years old. The picture that's on the screen shows one of the trees. I was reminded of the amazing endurance of oak trees when reading the passage from Isaiah that we heard earlier. That wonderful passage that begins, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed. Then Isaiah lists all that the Lord will do for his people. And then he says, he has called to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. And he says that the people in their recovery from the times of hardship and suffering will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. Oaks of righteousness. What better image for strength and lasting endurance than an oak tree, which even from a stump can grow for hundreds of years more. Another image from the tree is that if you took a cross section, you would see a series of rings, each one indicating a year of the tree's life, a narrow ring indicating a year of little growth, a year perhaps of challenge, and a broad ring indicating a year of good growth, a year of plenty, a year of blessing, a year to rejoice. Today, the third Sunday in Advent is referred to as Gaudete Sunday. The word Gaudete means rejoice. But this year, we may struggle to find a reason to rejoice when there has been so much suffering because of the pandemic. And even as we look forward to an easing of the situation 
with the delivery of a vaccine, we may be hesitant about rejoicing too early. Yet, that is what St Paul demands of the early church, to rejoice always in every circumstance. Paul had gone on his missionary journeys and had gathered small communities of Christians in the towns and cities around the eastern Mediterranean. Paul had proclaimed the good news of God's favour in the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ and the promise of salvation. In his letter to the Romans, Paul lays out a simple statement of faith. If you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. It seems so simple to declare out loud, Jesus is Lord, and to believe inside oneself that God raised him from the dead. But to do that at that time was to be different. It was to open oneself to persecution, to bring upon oneself some level of suffering. So Paul, because he can't be present with the churches all of the time, writes letters of encouragement to them, to the Thessalonians or to the Philippians or wherever. He writes letters of encouragement in their times of suffering. And he tells them to rejoice. One of Paul's pleas with the churches is that they should be imitators of Christ. But he also asks them to imitate himself, to imitate Paul. And just as Paul many times says that he rejoices in his suffering because it's a sharing in Christ's suffering, so they should always rejoice, whether it's in response to the challenge of suffering or in a time of blessing. For Paul argues, all is blessing. All moments are moments in that journey to salvation. I imagine that Paul knows how difficult it is to comply with such a demand, to rejoice always. But he says in the letter to the Thessalonians, the God of peace will sanctify you. Or in the letter to the Philippians, the peace of God will guard your hearts. And in his letter to the Romans, he writes, we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance and endurance produces character and character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, which has been given to us. That was the promise of God proclaimed by John the Baptist when he said, I baptise with water, but the one who comes after me will baptise with the Holy Spirit. We will be immersed in the Holy Spirit. That attitude of rejoicing in every circumstance is about understanding that the way of the gospel is not always an easy path. It is as challenging for us as it was for Paul and for the early church and for the disciples as it was for Jesus who began life in hardship in that stable and ended his life in hardship on the cross. It's also about understanding that we do not walk that path alone. Paul wrote to the early church, encouraging them to encourage one another, to uphold one another, to love one another. If the word rejoice is used often by Paul, the phrase one another is used much more, dozens of times. Following the way of the gospel is something done in community. It's done with one another. Sharing in the lives of all the baptised, in the lives of all God's people. But it's also about being accompanied by the Spirit of God, which we receive in our baptism 
as we receive the gift of grace, the gift of endurance. Unlike oak trees, a physical cross-section of my body would not show a series of annual rings of varying sizes, indicating years of good growth and others of poor growth. But imagine if you could draw out a cross-section of my memory or of my character, you might see a kind of pattern that indicated times of blessing and times of hardship. Whatever pattern is there would be incomplete if any bit of it was missing. The fact that each element of the pattern has contributed to something makes me who I am now and that I should rejoice both in who I am now but in each experience that has brought me to this point. As some might say that I've lived to tell the tale. You might do the same with the church as you trace its history. You would see in its history times of growth and times of challenge. And it is as the community of faith that we rejoice in all that God puts before us. And as a community of rejoicing in Isaiah's words, all who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. They will be called oaks of righteousness, displaying the glory of the Lord. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one substance with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. Amen. With the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate of the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he arose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one, holy, Catholic and Apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. Some words from the prophet Isaiah. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God. On this Sunday, when we are invited to rejoice in the Lord and to give thanks in all circumstances, we offer our prayers for the needs of the peoples of the world, for the Church in carrying out God's mission, and for ourselves in our own need. And we offer prayers of thanksgiving for all that God has done in Jesus Christ to show people the way of salvation. God of grace, we pray for your Church for all who have received the gift of the Spirit in holy baptism. As we keep this season of Advent, preparing ourselves for the coming of your Son, we pray that we may show our sense of joy in all that we do to show your love to the world. We pray for ourselves in this congregation that we may day by day grow deeper in faith, we pray for Bishop Mark and the clergy and people of this diocese and for the ongoing Episcopal election in the Diocese of Argyll and the Isles, 
and for the candidates who are being considered. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of justice, we pray for those in our world who are oppressed, whose lives are marred by the evils of persecution and corruption, of conflict and prejudice, of exploitation and slavery. We pray for those whom you have appointed to proclaim liberty and release, to bring comfort and hope, that they will bring praise to the lips of the faint-hearted, that the ruins of generations may be restored. We pray for right and just government here and abroad, for honesty and integrity to mark the work of our government ministers and politicians in Holyrood and Westminster. We pray for our world, that with a spirit of repentance for the way in which your gifts have been wrongly used, people everywhere may show a right care of our environment and careful use of the earth's resources. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of mercy, we rejoice in the gifts you give to those who have worked to bring us new vaccines against the coronavirus and to the doctors and nurses who deliver care and treatment to all who are affected. We pray for all who work to bind up the brokenhearted and to bring healing to the sick. We pray for those who we know who are ill, who have asked our prayers. John Campbell, Paula Devlin, Ian Hallam, John McLean, Julia Sinclair, Father Gerald, Sheila Robertson, Annie O'Neill, Stuart Rossthorne. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of peace, as we pray for peace in the hearts of all your people, we pray that you will grant your eternal peace to those departed this life. We remember with thanksgiving those we've known and loved but see no more. And we pray for the, soul, the repose of the souls recently departed, whose lives have been cut short because of accident or violence. We pray for past members and benefactors of this church, whose years mind is at this time. Fenella Riddle, Harriet Sweetham, Connie McCauley and Anne Clunas. Rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. And we pray for those who mourn, that they will be comforted with the oil of gladness, assured that their loved ones rest with you. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord God, help us in the work you give us to do to bring good news and encircle us with the garland of your love. Heavenly Father, accept these and all our prayers, which we offer in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. We meet in Christ's name. Let us share his peace. Lo, he comes with clouds descending, once for favoured sinners Oh. 
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become the cup of our salvation. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Worship and praise belong to you, God our Maker. Out of nothing you called all worlds to be, and still you draw the universe to its fulfilment. Dawn and evening celebrate your glory, till time shall be no more. In Christ your Son, the life of heaven and earth were joined, sealing the promise of a new creation, given yet still to come. Taught by your Spirit, we who bear your threefold likeness, look for the city of peace, in whose light we are transfigured and the earth transformed. As children of your redeeming purpose, who await the coming of your Son, we offer you our praise with angels and archangels and the whole company of heaven, singing the hymn of your unending glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Jesus, you showed us yourself. Our hope is built on him who is the first and the last and the living one. Obedient even to accepting death, he opened the gate of glory and calls us now to share the life of heaven. Before he was given up to suffering and death, a light with a vision of a feast that heralded a kingdom yet to come. At supper with his disciples, he took bread and offered you thanks. He broke the bread and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body. It is broken for you. After supper, he took the cup. He offered you thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant. It is poured out for you and for all that sins may be forgiven. Do this in remembrance of me.
we now obey your Son's command. We recall his blessed passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and we look for the coming of his kingdom. Made one with him, we offer you these gifts, and with them ourselves, a single, holy, living sacrifice. Hear us, most merciful Father, and send your Holy Spirit upon us, and upon this bread and this wine, that overshadowed by his life-giving power, they may be the body and blood of your Son, and we may be kindled with the fire of your love and renewed for the service of your kingdom. Help us, who are baptized into the fellowship of Christ's body, to live and work to your praise and glory. May we grow together in unity and love, until at last in your new creation we enter into our heritage, in the company of the Virgin Mary, the Apostles and Prophets, and of all our brothers and sisters, living and departed, through Jesus Christ our Lord, with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be to you, Lord of all ages, world without end. Amen. Amen. The living bread is broken for the life of the world. Lord, unite us in this sign. As our Saviour Christ has commanded and taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Lord, you are grace for our needs, strength for our weakness, light for our blindness, word for our deafness, love for our loneliness, joy for our weariness, peace for our anxiousness, wonder for our dullness, saviour for our hopelessness. Lord, you are grace for all our needs. Amen. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is gracious, is his mercy, mercy endures forever. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O Lord, for these heavenly gifts. Kindle in us the fire of your Spirit, that when your Christ comes again, we may shine as lights before his face, through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 
Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon you and scatter the darkness from before your path. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Christ is the world's true light, his captain of salvation. The day star clear and bright of every man and nation. New life, new hope awakes where man on his way freedom her bondage breaks and night is turned to day in Christ all races meet their ancient views forgetting the whole round world complete from sunrise to its setting. When Christ is Lord as Lord, men shall forsake their fear to the shepherd the sword, to pruning hook the spear. One Lord in one great name, Unite us all who own me. Cast out our pride and shame that hinder to and thro.